catacombs cubes, one to four players are gathering resources to construct buildings in the village. Elsra provided this in exchange for an honest review. Separate the core resources by type. Obsidian is a single cube, but the purple crystal is made up of four. Put the planning and choir boards in a central area. The town hall goes in the middle of what will eventually be the village grid. The resources and coins should be within reach. Every player takes a player board in matching bits. Everyone puts their victory tracker on the first square of the victory point track. Shuffle the village tiles, put four blueprints side up in the four right squares on the planning board. Draw one more in the leftmost square so players can see the upcoming tile. The rest go nearby. Shuffle the palace tiles, draw two, then place them in a stack in the left red spot on the planning board. Everyone decides which side of the player board to choose. One side means you'll start with resources and the other means you'll start with coins. There are two ways to create the quarry offer. One is simple. Player one rolls the dice. Arrange them in the quarry based on color. The foreman may switch two dice between columns. Going clockwise, players will draft both dice in a column and gain the resources or actions shown. If you use the quarry tokens, the foreman draws tokens and places them in the brown spaces. Now draw another tile. Peek at it secretly, then place it in the column's top white space. Do this until all columns have three tokens. When a player drafts from the offer, they may take the two visible tokens or one visible and one secret one. The point of the game is to collect resources to build these tiles. Once you've gathered the necessary building resources, you can build the structure on your turn instead of drafting from the offer. Your opponents will confirm that it's correctly built and you collect the reward if it is. The top right shows the victory points and sometimes an obsidian block, a resource of the player's choice, or adding an obsidian from the supply to the palace. Any blocks not used to build the structure are returned to the supply, except for obsidian and any resources in the warehouse. Finally, flip the tile and add it to the village grid, gaining rewards from the triangular connectors. Any number of coins may be spent before or after your main action. The silver coin allows you to store a resource in your warehouse, keeping it safe for the future. The red coin allows you to add one of your resources to the palace. The blue coin allows you to break a resource into smaller ones, an obsidian, and something else. As you add to the palace, you'll move up the track, earning obsidian or victory points. The player who completes the palace earns the victory points, then places the tile in the village. Reset the track, but keep the first palace intact. Now players can start building the second palace. If you somehow build the second one without triggering the end of the game, give out the rewards and reset the track again. You no longer earn obsidian for moving up the track. The main part of the game will be you building the public structures, although each player will have a personal residence. If you finish this, gain the reward like normal. When a tile is built, flip and add it to the village grid. Connect your arrows, award obsidian, victory points, or coins. If you have two different connectors, choose one. If you have matching connectors, gain two of that reward. When tiles are placed next to existing ones, only the new tile generates rewards except for your residences. Thanks to your little house token, you'll know to collect a resource of your choice whenever an opponent places an adjacent tile. Once the 4x4 grid, 4x5 with 4 players, is complete, the game ends after everyone has had an equal number of turns. If a structure is built on this turn, the player still earns VP, but nothing else because there is no space in the village. Players check to see who is the most of each colored coin. 5 VP for first, 3 VP for second, and 1 VP for third place. Once you've done this, the player with the most points wins. Gain resources, build structures, and keep an eye on ways to earn coins and maximize actions to earn the most points. That's Catacombs Cubes. Save this for dining tables. The central area grows as you play. The player areas are about the size of a placement. Plus, there are many bits and cards. There's no rating, and math is very simple. To win, you'll need to see what others need. Experienced seven-year-old gamers could give this a try. Once you know the game, this takes, including setup and takedown, 
20 to 25 minutes per player. Elzer taught us Catacombs Cubes at Dice Tower West. It was close between me, Mom, and Dad. Dad did what he always does, hang in the game, then find some way to sneak a bunch of points at the end. He did this by finishing the palace and stockpiling coins. Mom was steady, constructing something every couple of turns. I was going for big buildings, adding to the palace, and hoarding tokens too. In the end, Mom had 35, and me and Dad tied at 39. Unfortunately, he won the tiebreaker. There's a variant that changes how resources are discarded. I prefer Catacombs Cubes' competitive resource rule because the quarry foreman has the choice. This increases the foreman's power a little. The hidden information the foreman has when choosing quarry tokens is a very clever design. Are they trying to trick you into choosing one of the columns? On the other hand, they choose last. I like the different connectors on the tiles. You might choose a less valuable building tile because the connector rewards get you some of those valuable coins or even better, victory points. The blue and purple resources are very similar in color. The connectors are worse though. The blue coin connector is dark blue, but the coin is light blue. Don't play this in low light because they're too hard to tell apart. The instructions on the tiles remind me of Lego. It works well, but not for me. I struggle visualizing these, both with the 2D and 3D example. My dad's good at this stuff and has won every game we've played. If your family has someone strong and someone weak at visualizing, younger players might get frustrated. This game can drag if the players aren't planning during other people's turns. If everyone is focused, the game goes from, okay, we just started. What's my game plan? to, oh gosh, it's almost over already, very quickly. Catacombs Cubes is a fun tile lane game with quick turns. I think that the theme and accessible rules make this a good fit for families. You do feel like you're building structures, but you don't feel like you're building a village. I like a variant where bonuses are given if building tiles are connected thematically. I reviewed Tiny Towns last year, and I'll link to it at the end of this video. Both games use cube resources to build, and while they have quite a few differences, I slightly prefer this one over Tiny Towns because the quarry tokens give you more strategic control, although Tiny Towns is faster. Hopefully my reviews help you decide which one is the best for your family.